Hello and welcome to the Price Academy Bite Size History Videos. This video is introducing the Fire of London which happened from the 2nd of September to the 6th of September 1666. The Fire of London started on the 2nd of September in the King's Bakery on Pudding Lane near London Bridge. Rather than making fresh loaves for the King, Baker Thomas Baronet produced dry and bland biscuits called hard tack that filled the sailors of the Royal Navy's stomachs. In the early hours of Sunday the 2nd of September 1666, the Farriner family woke up to smoke coming from the bakery on the ground floor of their house. They escaped out of the upper floor window, but unfortunately their maid was too afraid to jump, so was the first victim of the Fire of London. Fires were pretty common in the 1600s and when the Lord Mayor of London, Sir Thomas Bloodworth, was woken up to be told about the fire, he replied, Pish, a woman might pee it out. However, that summer had been very hot and there had been no rain for weeks, so consequently the wooden houses and buildings were tinder dry. The fire soon took hold and 300 houses quickly collapsed and the strong east wind spread the flames further, jumping from house to house. The fire swept through the Warrener streets lined with houses, the upper stories of which are most touched across the narrow winding lanes. Efforts to bring the fire under control by using buckets quickly failed. Panic began to spread throughout the city. As the fire raged on, people tried to leave the city and poured down to the River Thames in an attempt to escape by boat. Absolute chaos reigned and Samuel Pepys gave a dramatic first-hand account of the next few days. Pepys was a clerk to the Privy Seal and he hurried off to inform King Charles II. The King ordered that all houses in the path of the fire should immediately be pulled down to create a firebreak. This was done with hooked poles but it was to no avail. By the 4th of September half of London was in flames. The king himself joined the firefighters, passing buckets of water in an attempt to quell the flames, but the fire raged on. The last resort, gunpowder was used to blow up houses that lay in the path of the fire to create an even bigger firebreak. Apparently, the sound of the explosion started rumours that a French invasion was taking place, so even more panic ensued. As refugees poured out the city, St Paul's Cathedral was caught in the flames and acres of lead from the roof melted and poured down the street like a river and the great cathedral collapsed. The Tower of London escaped the inferno and eventually the fire was brought under control. By the 6th of September it was extinguished altogether. In total, one fifth of London was left standing 13,000 private dwellings were destroyed, sick people sadly died, or hundreds of thousands were left homeless, 89 churches and 57 halls were burnt down, and the loss of property was estimated at 5 to 7 million pounds. King Charles gave 100 guineas to the firefighters to share between them. The culprit of the fire was Robert Hubert, a French watchmaker, who confessed to starting the fire deliberately although whether this is true is debatable. After the fire, Sir Christopher Wren was given the task of rebuilding London and his masterpiece, St Paul's Cathedral, was started in 1675 and completed in 1711. A monument was also erected on Pudding Lane where the fire started. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, to like it and subscribe to the channel or follow me at Twitter or at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash TanyaAlex38.